Hi everybody, Jacob Reed here from ReviewEcon.com. Today we're going to be talking about the Phillips Curve. If after watching this video you still need a little more help, head over to ReviewEcon.com and pick up the Total Review Booklet. It has everything you need to know to ace your microeconomics or macroeconomics exam. Let's get into the content. So the first thing we're going to do is talk about the short run Phillips Curve. Now the Phillips Curve shows the relationship between the unemployment rate and the inflation rate. The first thing we're going to do is talk about the short run relationship between those two. In the short run, there is an inverse relationship between the inflation rate and the unemployment rate. That means when we have high inflation in the short run, we are going to have low unemployment. And when we have low inflation, there will be high unemployment in the short run. When we go ahead and put that relationship on the graph, we are going to have the inflation rate on the y-axis and the unemployment rate on the x-axis. The short run Phillips curve is a downward sloping curve labeled SRPC for short run Phillips curve. And that downward slope shows us the inverse relationship between the unemployment rate and the inflation rate. And we can see movement on that curve changing both the inflation rate and the unemployment rate. If we have a low inflation rate with high levels of unemployment and there's an increase in the inflation rate, that's going to give us a lower unemployment rate in the short run. And if we see the inflation rate decrease, that will be movement down the curve, causing an increase in the unemployment rate in the short run. So that's how the short run Phillips curve shows us the short run trade-off between the inflation rate and the unemployment rate. When one increases, the other decreases. When one decreases, the other increases but that's only in the short run. Next, we're going to talk about the shifters of the short run Phillips curve. Essentially, anything that will cause a short run aggregate supply shock to the economy will also cause a short run Phillips curve shift. Negative short run supply shocks will cause a rightward shift of the Phillips curve. And of course, those things that cause the leftward shift of the short run aggregate supply curve are higher inflation expectations, higher input costs, lower productivity, and other things. So anything that would cause the short run aggregate supply curve to shift to the left will cause the short run Phillips curve to shift to the right. And when we get that rightward shift of the short run Phillips curve, it shows us that there is higher inflation and higher unemployment at the same time. We call that cost push inflation or stagflation. And if we have a positive supply shock to the economy that shifts the short run aggregate supply curve to the right, the short run Phillips curve is going to shift to the left. Of course, positive supply shocks to the economy can come from lower inflation expectations, lower input costs, higher productivity, and other things. If any of those things occur, the short run Phillips curve is going to shift to the left, and that means we will have lower inflation and lower unemployment at the same time. Next, we're going to talk about the long run Phillips curve and the long run relationship between the inflation rate and the unemployment rate. In the long run, there is no relationship between the unemployment rate and the inflation rate. As a result, when we graph out the long run Phillips curve, we will get a vertical long run Phillips curve labeled LRPC. And the unemployment rate we find below the long run Phillips curve is the natural rate of unemployment labeled NRU on that graph. And if we have movement up that long run Phillips curve illustrated as an increase in the inflation rate, we will see no change in the unemployment rate because in the long run, the economy will be at the natural rate of unemployment at any inflation rate. And so when we have movement down that Phillips curve, that is a decrease in the inflation rate. And again, we will see no change in the unemployment rate as a result because either way, the economy will stay at the natural rate of unemployment. Of course, like most other curves in this class, this curve can shift and it will shift with changes in the natural rate of unemployment. If we have a decrease in structural unemployment, perhaps through increases in job trainings programs from the government, or we have a decrease in frictional unemployment, perhaps there are new websites that come around that help connect employers with employees looking for work. Either of those would decrease the natural rate of unemployment, shifting the short run Phillips curve to the left. And if we had changes that increased either structural or frictional unemployment, that would shift the short run Phillips curve to the right. Now we're going to put the long run and short run Phillips curves together on the same graph. We still have the inflation rate on the Y axis and the unemployment rate on the X axis. And below the long run Phillips curve, we have the natural rate of unemployment. And when we put these two curves on the same graph, we can find the expected inflation rate that is found at the intersection between the long run and short run Phillips curve. Find that point and bring it over to the axis. That is the expected inflation rate labeled pi E here. And when the actual inflation rate is the expected inflation rate, then the unemployment rate will be equal to the natural rate of unemployment. There will be no cyclical unemployment 
only frictional and structural. And of course that occurs when the economy is in long run equilibrium. On the ASAD model, that means that the economy is producing at the full employment level of output. If on the other hand we have a recessionary gap where the economy is producing less than the full employment level of output, that means we are going to have lower than expected levels of inflation and a higher rate of unemployment than the natural rate. If we have an inflationary gap, that means that the economy is producing more than the full employment level of output, the actual inflation rate will be higher than expected and the unemployment rate will be lower than the natural rate. To take our understanding of the Phillips curve a little further, we're going to show how it integrates with the ASAD model. Let's go ahead and pull up our long run and short run Phillips curve and let's add our ASAD model as well. Now movements that we see in the ASAD model will be mirrored on the Phillips curve model. That means changes we see moving to the right in the ASAD model will move to the left on the Phillips curve model. And changes in the ASAD model that move to the left will move to the right in the Phillips curve model. If our economy is at long run equilibrium in the ASAD model, we are at point A here. And on the Phillips curve model, it means we are right there at the intersection between the two curves. We have the full employment level of output in the ASAD model and the natural rate of unemployment in the Phillips curve model. And on the Phillips curve model, we also have the expected rate of inflation. When aggregate demand shifts happen in the ASAD model, that causes movement along the short run aggregate supply curve. And that's going to give us an opposite direction movement along the short run Phillips curve. If in the ASAD model we have an increase in aggregate demand, the price level is going to increase and real GDP is also going to increase. Over on the Phillips curve model, we see that as movement up the curve. The higher price level we see in the ASAD model means we have a higher inflation rate on the Phillips curve model. And the higher level of output on the ASAD model means a lower unemployment rate in the Phillips curve model. If on the other hand, we have a leftward shift of the aggregate demand curve, the price level is going to fall and real GDP output will decrease. Over on the Phillips curve model, we see that as movement down the curve. The lower price level in the ASAD model means we have a lower inflation rate on the Phillips curve model. And the lower amount of real GDP output in the ASAD model means we have a higher unemployment rate in the Phillips curve model. So aggregate demand shifts are going to cause movement along the short run aggregate supply curve and a opposite direction movement along the short run Phillips curve. Now, when it comes to shifts of the short run aggregate supply curve in the ASAD model, we are going to see an opposite shift of the short run Phillips curve. Let's go ahead and put the graphs back up. And if we have a rightward shift of the short run aggregate supply curve, the price level has fallen and the real GDP output has increased. Over on the Phillips curve model, we are going to see that as a leftward shift of the short run Phillips curve. In the ASAD model, we saw a decrease in the price level. And so in the Phillips curve model, we see a decrease in the inflation rate. Over on the ASAD model, we see an increase in the real GDP output, and that means a lower unemployment rate in the Phillips curve model. If on the other hand, we have a leftward shift of the short run aggregate supply curve, that's going to be seen as a rightward shift of the short run Phillips curve. In the ASAD model, we have an increase in the price level, and that is seen as an increase in the inflation rate on the Phillips curve model. In the ASAD model, we see a decrease in the real GDP output, and that is shown as an increase in the unemployment rate on the Phillips curve model. So short run aggregate supply curve shifts are going to be seen as an opposite direction shift of the short run Phillips curve. And there you have it. That is what you need to know about the short run and long run Phillips curves. If you're ready to practice, head over to reviewecon.com and play the Phillips curve game. If you still need more help after that, pick up the total review booklet. It has everything you need to know to ace your microeconomics and macroeconomics exam. That's it for now. I'll see you all next time.